see you're, you're in, the, in the heat, you know, you're driving a forklift, unloaded window trucks, that's not easy. I try to tell that to the newcomers that it is possible. If you put in the work, someone will notice and then ultimately then you'll be given the opportunity, just like I had, you know, at a young age. Welcome to the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast, our regular discussion with building industry professionals. This is Senior Editor Patrick McComb. Today, I'm joined by Cesar Gonzalez, a store manager for 84 Lumber. You can find the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast and the original Fine Home Building podcast at finehomebuilding.com slash podcast. You can leave feedbacks and ask questions there too. Cesar, thanks so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Hey guys, good morning, Patrick. How's it going? Can you please tell me where you work and uh, what you do for the company of 84 Lumber? Yeah. So, uh, f- first and foremost, thank you for having me. Um, as you already may already know, I'm the uh, general. I currently work for 84 Lumber. I'm currently the general manager of out of our uh, Fort Lauderdale location in Davie, Florida. So I've been with the company for about eight years, going on my ninth. And uh, during that time period. I was about 20 years old, going to college full time and working part time in the evenings. And um, how I stumbled with 84 was through a friend recommendation. Um, so it, this is pretty much how. So I he was ent- working there and said, yeah. "Yeah, you might want to try this." Yeah, pretty much. I um, yeah, like any other uh, teenager, you know, trying to figure their way out, figure their way into uh, whether it's a company or um, finish school. Pretty Had you been so. around building at all uh, in your lifetime before this? Um, not not necessarily. No, no. no I had just um, just had part time jobs navigating through school before I stumbled with eighty four. Uh, as I understand it, like a lot of uh, America, there's a large uh, Spanish speaking population of contractors and tradespeople in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so you and your uh, teammates at your store have to be bilingual. I'm sure, right? Not um, not necessarily. It is definitely not required, but it's much helpful um, being that uh, Fort Lauderdale is the melting pot of like many nationalities. Spanish being like the second most language in the market. Um, if you don't know how to write Spanish, if you can at least speak it, it is um, that's already an advantage. Mm-hmm. A good portion of our like walk in business speaks Spanish. And for the most most of those customers prefer to communicate with someone that um, understands them better in their native language. Um, it's so more we, likely they'll get the right stuff yeah. they need, right? If you can communicate yeah. and you won't yeah, waste their time. That's, yeah. Ultimately, that's what you want to do is get, help the customer get what they need. Mm-hmm. There's a, a, I'm a, I'm familiar with 84 Lumbers because I used to shop at them when I was a carpenter in Western Pennsylvania. Like, can you tell me about your stores? Everything outside? I get it. I bet it gets sweltering hot in the buildings in the summertime. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So being that um, Fort Lauderdale is, is probably like our southernmost like store down in here in Florida, um, it definitely is uh, the closest to the equator. So I can tell you that <laughs> it is it does get uh, pretty, pretty hot. It's very humid out here. Um, but, yeah, as far as our location, it it's pretty much provides a wide range of building materials and accessories. Um, so we've been blessed in that aspect. We've been able to grow the, the, the store because we're, you know, we cover the whole Fort Lauderdale, which pretty much is in the Broward County down to uh, down to uh, Dade County. So we cover that pretty large uh, market down in South Florida. So uh, I'm guessing, you know, Florida has a huge stucco market and masonry uh, construction. Like, do you have masonry and stucco things uh, in addition to, to lumber and sticks? Um, we do have like stucco mix, concrete mix, um, bags and stuff like that. Nothing really that, um, like eight by eight, 16 block or nothing like that. Um, we obviously focus on, on, uh, like the lumber aspect of the business. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of the um, homes here are, uh, concrete, obviously. Um, what we do, we do sell material to finish the exterior part, like, you know, siding and, you know, wood siding, fiber cement siding, stuff like that to uh, to cover the ex- exterior part, but not so much like block. We don't sell block. Down on, is, at least not down on this location, we don't. Is all the lumber pressure treated? Because you also have like huge problems with termites and uh, other, you know, wood destroying insects, right? So that is a huge um, part of our business down here 
is uh, the uh, pressure tree lumber. That is um, what we, I would say a good portion. Uh, when I say a good portion, at least half of our business pressure treated. I mean, just the termites and and a lot of our customer base um, also export down to like the Bahamas, uh, down into like the Caribbeans. And they like, they demand pressure treating. Sure. Uh, it's really bad down there. So yeah, that's a good, a good niche for us. Uh, besides all the extra commodities and specialty lumbers that we carry. Mm-hmm. Uh, roof shingles, I'm guessing. How about like concrete tile? There's a lot of clay and concrete tile in Florida, as I recall, for roofing. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we get into uh, like uh, dimensional shingles and, um, you know, your, your three tap shingles, of course, but not so much into tiles or clay tiles. I mean, there is that's a whole different industry. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know if we'll ever get into that, uh, but that's there's a pretty big market when the roof and uh, building supply. Um, so we kind of like uh, we kind of stick with what we know. Obviously, um, that's more of a roofing aspect of the business, and we let the other guys, t- you know, take a bite at that. Sure. Mm-hmm. And like, do you have windows in, in stock, or is the, are those all uh, coming from a warehouse from a supplier, a window supplier? Uh, it's coming from the window supplier. Um, we obviously order to up to spec. We get it from, uh, we order to the customers um, specs and uh, under plans. Um, yeah, we order that. As you know, like the window business has is, is been, is been real tight. So it's just kind of like, um, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we try to help the customer. Old Tim, that's what we try to do. So if uh, someone needs windows, obviously we, we try to get them. We obviously give them a disclaimer as well, like how long it's going to take. Um, so is that getting better, Cesar? Uh, I don't know if it's getting better. I think we're we're just learning how to be more patient. Because <laughs> uh-huh. um, I, I mean, in some cases, it can take uh, ten to twelve weeks. So. And- as I understand it, we're not talking like out of the ordinary stuff. Even like mainstream windows can take that long. Is that correct? Pretty much. Yeah. I think it's just like the whole, that industry alone with uh, with their materials, their raw goods. And, and this has been, I don't think they've been able to get it as quickly as they they have. I think production has only been able to do what they have. Um, so they're like a little behind on, on, their, on their goods. So that's going to limit the, how much they can produce. So I don't know if a... Uh, I mean, I'm sure things will get normal at some point, um, but definitely the demand is still strong in that in that industry. So we'll see. We'll see how how long or how if they're able to cut down the time frame or the lead times a little, little bit. You you uh you touched on it. You said we just have learned to be more patient. Like when this first started, were customers losing their minds that they had to wait eight or ten weeks for Windows because it was that would be very unusual. I can tell you, I can only speak for like my customer base, but <laughs> my customer base here was, yeah, very much impatient. I think they got so used to like, ne- like, um, but two well, weeks, well, right? Especially because we-, we don't have, yeah, it, it used to be, yeah, it used to be quick. Um, and then it just got, became a domino effect. The next, you know, like, I mean, your the projects are being on, put on hold and, costing customers money and time frame they can't get you know it, it just got really bad for a second there <laughs> uh so we were able to i think after a while i think they were able to pro- uh, properly plan and we start seeing things the repetitive pattern of lo- a strong long lean time so i think they, they, they became more understanding for sure and they just started ordering windows earlier in the process i'm sure right that's like what you do right to make yeah. up for that yeah as soon as you get those plans you start ordering those windows cuz they were going to take about four potentially even more for like four months plus sometimes <laughs> you know <laughs> i've worked in a pro lumberyard in my life and uh, it can be a a stressful environment i think you'd agree um what's stressful about it for you what I remember about 84 Lumber was there was a culture of hustling. Like you have to be um, getting stuff done all the time, right? There's there's no standing yes. around talking. Yeah, I mean, uh, that hasn't changed. I think um, ultimately running a store is not easy. Um, it, it has its challenges. There's a lot of moving parts. There's, there's always like a long list of things that you like you need to get done before the day ends. Otherwise you you end up, you start falling behind and it becomes like a domino effect. And, and then, yeah, so, but, but it, you, um, but it does happen, you know, there's always some challenges in, in what I call curveballs that happen on a daily basis. 
I think um, between like a forklift breaking down, the tractor trailer catching a flat tire on on the way to the job site, an employee calling in sick. That that was that was you know pretty pretty. Can pretty you talk common. about that briefly? Like, have you had uh, employees out with COVID for long periods of time? How do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah. Um, when it first happened, maybe not so much because I, I think we were just realizing what was going on. But once we knew, and obviously the 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 word COVID was was coming out, and and yeah, anytime anyone got felt sick, you, you had to tell them to stay home, and that that just kind of put a strain on the business a little bit. But uh, ultimately, for us, we were able to um, adjust and pivot a little bit there, and we have we have really strong um, guys and girls here. And uh, we were able to just kind of like fill in the gaps. Um, so in that aspect, I think it put a lot of pressure on each one of us, but it also uh, pushed us to like a uh, to be able to work at a, at a faster pace. And, you know, so we I think we got better through the process as well. I remember like uh, when someone was out at the lumber yard where I worked, like it would be difficult to build loads for the next day because somebody had to do something else instead of being out there picking lumber. Were were deliveries taking longer? Were folks having to come get their stuff instead of getting a delivery? Um, well, we, we, with the for us, yes, it was, it was there was a period of time where we we lost a a, a tractor trailer. Um, like we we a, a driver had to move to move ended up moving to a different state. Yeah. So not only like were we like bottlenecking on orders, we also like couldn't get them out faster. Um, but we were able to, for the most part, obviously seeing it come in and, and be able to tell the customers, hey, this is what's going on. And um, so it was just a small, small congestion there. Uh, but we, after that, we, uh, we were able to work with the hauler and then be able to get another truck. And then next thing you know, we, we got back to where we needed to be. So, yeah, it definitely put us a, a small strain there, but we were able to bounce back for sure. I'm guessing uh, business has been good for the last two and a half years. Uh, can you talk about how we've mentioned some of the ways COVID has affected your business, but are there mm-hmm. some things that we haven't talked about? Um, as far as like the business growing, is, is that what you're referring to? Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing sales have been good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will be honest, like my store uh, was already doing good here uh, for the time, for like when I took over. Um, and I feel like with the pandemic, besides that, that small period of time where things were uncertain, obviously, yeah, yeah there was there was a, a small pull back there. But once the pandemic kind of like people started getting, you know, working from home and getting back to just working. Right. Um, most people uh, started investing in the home and uh, people came out of the woodwork and just um, starting buying more materials. And it definitely increased our sales and and you know, and turn up the notch a little bit, if you will. Um, and then, yeah, so that definitely, I would say the first part, when it first started coming out, um, yeah, I put a strain, but after it evolved, I think it definitely helped us increase our sales. Um, like, obviously there was a time where there was like lumber shortage too. Uh, that was also like a challenge, but um, once The we, worst thing for a sales yeah. company is to not have stuff exactly. to sell, you know, right? That's And it's hard for customers too. Like they have- they have to sell things too, which means putting the products on the building, right? Yeah, exactly. And then obviously the lumber shortage and then price increases, and it it um it definitely it, I would say um, we were able to work with our suppliers and and our vendors, and and then they were able to put stuff and material and their products on our shelves and stock us up as much as possible. And at, at one point, um, that drove more customers to come inside our store because other suppliers were running out. So I feel like most customers that hadn't heard from us um, or never bought from us before, if you will, it, it, it put them in the, it, it made them get out of the comfort zone and the try well, they had been other, shopping. Yeah. yeah. And try others. And in that, in that moment, we also capitalized on that moment. And then we were able to meet new, new customer base and uh, ultimately help them out. And most of them like st- still shop to this day. So we definitely were able to uh, gain a bigger market share. Good for you. In the process. Yeah, man. So like, uh, is, are there things that are still hard to get? We talked about windows. What about lumber and plywood, which was really expensive for a period? Uh, there's definitely still a couple of things that, um, that are still hard to get like LVLs, uh, the, the EWP, um, um, category. 
uh, shingles. So some of those uh, brands are still in allocation. Then you have like certain cement siding products, um, soft floor adhesive. So there's definitely still certain lines that are still haven't really popped back in like they, like normal times. But um, I feel like it's a matter of time that they, they, they are. Um, like I know certain um, companies are, are increasing production through um, adding, you know, more like new facilities mm -hmm. to their, um, you know, to their companies. So hopefully certain things come, start popping back in the market. And obviously since like on the commodity side, uh, things have gotten a little stable. You're able to see more, more uh, lumber uh, in the industry. So, so has, that, was was did production increase to get more lumber, or is the demand uh, fallen off? Do you know? Is it is it easy to tell? Um, well, I would say for at least for down here, um, I did see uh, the supply catch up a little bit, and mm -hmm. the demand kind of like eased out a little bit as well. So it was a little bit of both. And obviously, we were able to also gauge and look at our usage and see um, where where we are and what what the movement has been in the last couple of months, and also plan ahead for that. Um, you know, I think back in the day, you would crunch a PO and then expect it to be there in a couple of weeks. That was we not should the tell case. folks what you're talking about. So you would place an order with your supplier, and you would mm -hmm. expect to see a truck or a train car come in a, in a couple of weeks. But Correct. how long does that take now? Uh, it's still a couple of weeks, uh, mm -hmm. two to three weeks in some cases. Yeah. So um, it's, it's almost feels sometimes normal, uh, but <laughs> you're always uh, you always got to look at your reports and see where you are, check out your movement. So I, I feel like in the process um, back then, you would just crunch a PO or kind of just like send it off to corporate to help us buy because we obviously have like a, a, group, a good group of buyers up there. And so I feel like now we're able to plan ahead better. And so with that being said, you're not, you know, running out because essentially that's that's being a sales company. You never want to run out. Right. You always want to have products and materials for your customers. Um, so especially yeah. when they are high demand. Right. That's that's the exactly. worst case scenario. Yeah, of course. So how many stores uh, are there in the uh, company? Um, it's hundreds, right? Yeah, it's like over 260. Oh, I couldn't wow. give you the exact number, but it's over 260 yeah. and, and they're still growing. They're still adding. I know they had plans on um, adding more locations all over the U.S., so they're definitely uh, reinvesting uh, some of that money back into the company. And obviously, in the process, uh, there's obviously more opportunity. You know, oh, yeah. so yeah, so it's a good time to be in the industry, industry for sure. Uh, in my experience, the folks who buy building materials are not always the most patient people and have uh, little tolerance for mistakes. I'll tell you my biggest screw up in the lumber business if you'll then tell me yours. Is that a deal? Sure. All right. So uh, we had a computer that we could enter orders into, right? And uh, for regular customers, those who had an account, uh, you could pull down a list of their current projects with addresses and put it as part of the uh, picking slip to pick the material. And then the driver would then deliver to the address that's on the ticket. One time I picked the wrong address. And the lumber driver had took a full flooring package and wall package and put it in front of the garage door of this house that had already been completed. And the worst part was the customer for this client of ours, the person who bought the new home, uh, was one of the most difficult people to ever get along with. And so we had to send. Um, and once you, as you know, put the lumber on the ground, it's way harder to get it back off, right, without a forklift. So we had to send two people out there to pick this lumber package off the asphalt driveway, load it back onto a truck to then take it to the right uh, job site address. So that made some people really mad at me. <laughs> you ever do anything yeah, like that? <laughs> cool. Yeah, I have a similar story, actually. We have, it's, it's has, happened to be, uh, Right. So you, you take an order, you assume that everything's going to go as planned, but it, it, you pray that it does. But we took an order for um, pine order, it's TNG, and you made it all the way to the job site. We, we unloaded with the box truck and customers started making the special cuts. And I mean, <laughs> you can blame multiple people there, but they order cedar TNG the whole time. And then we ended up dropping off pine TNG. So they started working with it, cutting it, and actually, you know, somewhere along the lines, maybe, maybe could have been hours in the job, and someone realized, hey, this is not cedar. 
Um, and then by then they had gone through like half the order, started making special <laughs> cuts and then wanted to return it and wanted to return it. Um, despite the fact that it's all cut up. Right. But, um, you had so to take it back, do, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. So we ended up just, yeah, um, eating it, I guess you can say. Yeah. It. You let him keep it. <laughs> yeah. Because we did, uh, we, we did deliver the wrong material. The guys on the job site just kind of just go, they don't, they don't know. Most of the time, they just want to go ahead and, and just finish the job, get in and out. So we delivered, obviously, the right material and then uh, brought back the cut up and then had to sell it for pennies on the dollar just to be able to get some money back. But <laughs> but it's one of those that you kind of it's so you, you got to check every order um, before, like while it's getting pulled, while it's leaving the yard and while the, it gets delivered. So, I mean, you learn through those lessons for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's easy to do because like. You know, most folks don't know the difference between, um, you know, like one grade of maple flooring uh, versus another. Right. So it would be very easy to pick the stuff off the wrong pile and send it out there. And it could be way more expensive than what they were supposed to get or like what happened to you. They could start installing it and then you have to send them the right thing and take back the other complicated You've advanced uh, rapidly, I might point out, at 84 Lumber. Do you think there's, like, uh, a good opportunities at the company? Yeah, I think so. Um, as long as you, you have the, uh, you know, you have the drive, the ambition, the work ethic. You got to work hard, right? You, you, yeah, you, you yeah got it's hustle. not going to be handed to you. Definitely not. I mean, I remember, I still remember when I first started. I mean, there was times for sure that I felt like, quitting if you will you know um because it's not it's not easy you're, you're in, the, in the heat you're pulling orders you know you're driving a forklift unloading trucks unloading window trucks that's not easy and some of those trucks have impact windows so that's definitely not easy they weigh hundreds of pounds right Got hundreds and it, even if you have special tools to pick them up it's it still puts a strain on your back so going like just as i was going up the ranks um it was a different challenge and a different challenge and once you look back, um, you evolved along the way. Um, so for me, once I look back when I first started and where I'm at now, I came a long way. I think I, I was able to learn um, a lot from my mistakes as well, but also be able to teach the, uh, the newcomers in. Um, so th- going back, I try to tell that to the newcomers that it is possible to, to m- move up in a company as long as, long as uh, you have the willpower. You know, as long as you you come to work on time, it's, I think it's a lot of it's in the, the, the basics, you know, show up on time, show up to work and work. It's easier said than done. Obviously, there's when you're being young, um, as young as you are, there are distractions. You know, you do want to go out the night before and come to work, but you have to set your priorities straight. And if you do, then um, you will be able to advance rapidly because I feel like um uh, someone's always noticing, you know? So if you put in the work, someone will notice. And then ultimately then you'll be given the opportunity just like I had, you know, at a young age. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, What, what's like the next rung on the ladder for you as, as a store manager? Uh, For me, based on, (laughs) on the career path that I'm under, um, it'll probably like an area manager position, which essentially covers a certain area, a certain region, uh, it could be like they say, like the Florida State um, or the up um, in the Carolinas. Uh, so there's there's definitely area managers that cover cover certain territories. That would be um, essentially my next step. But with time, you know, I think um, you can't rush the process. And the guys that are currently holding those positions are doing a great job too. So as long as you're present at the right time in the right moment, um, could could be a possibility. I. I kind of just, uh, you know, come work every day. Those are down the road. I, I take it day by day here at, at, at the shop. You, you know? got enough to worry about, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How Everyone many st- stores presents. does a territory manager uh, take care of? Uh, currently, the, uh, my area manager, Jason, he, he probably, I think he has about 17 or 18 stores. And what's um, his role? So- How does he help the process? Um, so pretty much any time that we... we get ourselves in the pickle um, when I need resources, whether it's like forklift um, as we've been able to grow, that has been a huge thing. Um, we've been able to expand our location 
um, adding um, like more parking spots for our location. So he's been able to help with development, create a plan on how to do that. Uh, we had to um, add new new lights to the uh, the shed. So again, you also get with the uh, development department and, and start. So any any enhancements, any resources, any um, any questions you may have, even on, even on certain problems that come up that, and that you you want to make sure you get it done the right way. Um, and so any kind of advice, because he's been there before. So you he's know, risen through the the company ranks. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same. Same. Just like just like I have, I think a lot of the guys have as well. So he kind of helps ease the process, you know, so he, he definitely is a great resource to have. And I'm guessing that lets you focus on, you know, serving your customers if you don't have to be worrying about getting permits for adding parking spaces to your storefront, right? Yeah, yeah. You could come up with the wish list and, and uh, see if it can help uh, facilitate that. <laughs> so, uh can you tell me about your own house? This is always one of my favorite parts of the show. Are you have you been able to find a place in Fort Lauderdale? Is stuff very expensive like it is in much of the country? Yeah. So when I when I moved here in 2017, I, I did live in like an apartment, which I already knew was gonna be temporary. And by 2018, I bought my place, and it was the per- right around the perfect time to do it. Uh, so I've been there ever since, and um, yeah. So. I, I was able to beat the the, the crazy market, um, you know, demand that that you see now. Um, so I was lucky enough to purchase ahead of time, and so I've been there since. I, I, I've, you know, a lot of people. There's a huge influx of of um, people moving down here. Sure. So that's only made the problem harder. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it's it's challenging for the newcomers. Do you like working on your house or are you happy to be away from building uh, at the end of the week? Um, so <laughs> there's always a honey-do list <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and the wife has a wish list. I always try to, like right now, we're going to here in the process, in the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to redo our flooring. So that's going to be challenging. It's gonna be a are lot you putting of down parts. hardwood or uh, do people uh, do that? Just, just vinyl flooring. Uh-huh. Nothing, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, so we're doing we're doing that. We recently updated our appliances, small small enhancements. Yeah, you know the um, things that uh, don't require a lot of work. <laughs> I helped paint the house right before I moved in, so it's it's coming along definitely. It's 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 always a it's uh it's always feels great when you work on your own home, you know. So it's rewarding for sure. And uh, any uh, problems that you're willing to fess up to, or stuff that you're thinking of tackling in the future. For uh, my home, yeah, at home. Uh, no, no, everything so far so good, man. I think, good. um, yeah. So if if I need materials, I know where to get them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the great things about working in the building material business is uh, stuff uh, is a little more affordable sometimes. Probably not too much, but a little. Yeah, it is, and and um, you can um, pick your pieces and you know pull in right to the pile and and. and get your stuff that you need. So it definitely is, it's easier. Do you think that, uh, you'll, uh, stay in the area? I mean, can you, if you, if you climb the ladder, would you, would you be willing to relocate to take another sales position? So I've had those conversations with the wife a, a few times and, um, she's, she was born and raised in Florida. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm actually was born and raised in California, LA. So I've already been moving. <laughs> But for her, um, I guess if it's she, her only requirement is is she she wants a pretty decent sized house with a large backyard. So as long as that's possible, I think she's open minded and and she's been very supportive. And um, if the, and obviously, if the opportunity presents itself and it's a good one, yeah, I, I'm, I've always been willing to. I've already moved a few times, and uh, every every move along the way has has been great. So. You know, I think um, I, I, I I don't have any regrets as of yet. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Cesar. Is there anything you'd like to ask or tell our audience before we go? Um, I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's always a couple of things. Obviously, I want to thank, uh, thank, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, thank the man upstairs, God, for obviously being able to help me push through it. Um, and I feel like it's the same. I want to tell like the 
you know, obviously tell to thank my parents, my siblings, and my coworkers at 84 Lumber that pretty much uh, helped me ra- help raise me, you know, um, and push me through the challenges. And I just want to tell people that if wherever they are, whether it's in school or working for a company, and there's opportunity to push through it, but also help push someone else as well, because that's that's how we can all progress along the way together. So it's just always push yourself and also push others. That's oh, that's the way we can all win. That was great, man. Well, I hope we can stay in contact. Uh, I need uh, an insider in the lumber biz to ask uh, questions about supply and prices and stuff. Are you the guy? Anytime, man. You got my number. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks to Cesar Gonzalez for joining us, and thanks to all of you for listening. Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at taunton.com. And please like, comment, or review us however you're listening. It helps other folks find our podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Keep craft alive. Be nice to your lumber guy. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>